Hey, welcome. Uh, this is the web app track. Um, this is uh, Stefan Esser talking about utilizing code reuse and return oriented programming in PHP application exploits. <laughs> okay. Um, hello. Um, welcome to um, utilizing code reuse and return oriented programming in uh, PHP application exploits. Um, <laughs> I will, will skip my introduction. So I just want to uh, tell you what the talk is about. Um, today I want to speak about uh, something like return-oriented programming um, for PHP applications. So um, I want to take uh, return-oriented programming to the PHP level. This will be the first part of the presentation. And the second part of the presentation will be uh, I will demonstrate a vulnerability in, in PHP that can be exploited with uh, uh, traditional return-oriented programming methods. So uh, during the last day, there were already several uh, presentations about return-oriented programming or return-oriented programming um, style topics. So um, I just will give you a short introduction what return-oriented programming is all about. So the basic idea of return-oriented programming is that you, uh, instead of injecting your shellcode uh, into an application, you uh, will inject some kind of data that uh, redirects the application's code flow. And your, the idea is to uh, not inject code, but to use the already existing code. And the general idea is that when you have pieces of uh, already existing code in an application, uh, you can rearrange them in a way that they will be s useful for, for your as an attacker. At least you hope so. But uh, when the application is big enough, you usually will find something. So in the past, uh, people always analyzed uh, return-oriented programming and code reuse topic on um, consumer arch architectures like x86, AMD, 64, Spark, PowerPC, the ARM architecture because of all the mobile devices. And um, when you saw the uh, talk yesterday, uh, since Dynamics guys are applying return-oriented programming to their reverse engineering intermediate language, which is called Rail. And last year, there was also a paper about people using return-oriented programming uh, against selection or voting system. <laughs> but so far, there is no real research on return-oriented programming or code reuse uh, for PHP or web applications. So when you look at um, code reuse techniques, you can classify them. And usually, code reuse is like the, the topic, the, the ma major theme. And uh, when you look at it, return-oriented programming is just a subset of code reuse techniques. techniques. And when you look at this, uh, a subset of return-oriented programming is return to libc. And on the other side, there's something <coughs> Most people don't speak about, but code reuse is usually bigger. So I put in the big question mark for now. So when you look at return-oriented programming uh, on the low-level side of uh, maybe x86, um, you see that all these techniques, uh, return-oriented programming and return to libc, base on the fact that you somehow hijack the call stack of the application. Uh, and you usually try to manipulate the call stack in a way that um, the return instructions that are present in the application will return to code uh, you want it to execute. And the code you usually execute is um, most of the time some useful instructions for you and then followed by the return. And in order to do this, you need full control over the stack. Um, the example just shows one of the possible stack frames that could be used for return or programming. In this case, it's some kind of uh, system call that is executed, and uh, yeah. So when you apply this technique directly to PHP, you will realize that that's not possible in PHP. The reason for that is um, there's not a single call stack that you could overwrite. Uh, the, the PHP application call stack is actually on three levels. A part of it is stored in the real stack, and the program stack. Um, a part of it is in, in allocated heap structures that is most probably randomized uh, on modern systems. And also the data segment contains pointers that are used by the executor to, uh, to, uh, to change the execution. So um, a traditional return on programming attack is not possible because you usually can only override one p piece of memory, 
but you cannot override three or four at the same time, especially if you don't know the addresses. So um, the other thing is if when you want to return to PHP bytecode, for example, PHP bytecode is always allocated on the heap, so it will be in uh, completely random positions on modern Linux systems. So return oriented programming seems impossible for PHP. But uh, if you remember this uh, picture, there's a big question mark on the side, and we want to fill this big question mark with a new technique, which I call property-oriented programming. Short is pop. So um, <laughs> what is property-oriented programming? The idea is that um, instead of overwriting some call stack or manipulating a call stack, you try to exchange the, the objects used in an application. So normally when you have objects, they have properties and these objects call uh, other methods of other objects stored in their properties. And now the idea is that I replace the objects stored in the, uh, in the properties and so I can redirect the code flow. Um, this graphic shows like uh, the circles are just random objects and you see one object is calling the other in the method of another object and, and so on. And uh, basically, if I can override the objects or the properties of the objects, uh, I can sh choose which uh, object is uh, executed next. The only thing that's maybe static is which uh, um, method is called. Okay, when you go down to the x86 level, this is not that easy, but uh, this is just a general concept and in PHP it works like this. So. Um, just believe me, like no. So, when you look at PHP, the problem is this technique has some limitations because uh, an x86 and return on into program, programming usually can jump anywhere in the binary. But in PHP, you cannot jump anywhere in the binary. You can only jump to starts of methods. So, this is a uh, limitation in comparison to, to uh, other exploits. Um, the other thing is, you usually cannot just override some objects in memory because uh, the objects in memory are in random positions and uh, um, yeah, so that's not another way to go normally. So what you need usually is a way to create objects from remote and to fill their properties. And in PHP that's uh, usually done by the unserialized function. I will go on that now. So unserialized is a function uh, of PHP that is used to um, yeah, deserialize previously serialized data. It supports nearly all of PHP's data types. The only data type that's not supported is resources, but all the normal things like integers, floating points, uh, booleans, arrays, strings, objects, and even references are, uh, can be serialized and unserialized. And when you look at PHP applications, you will see that they are often this, uh, expose this function to user input. And when you look at the history of the function, you see that there are a lot of vulnerabilities in the parser, in the unserialized parser itself in the, in the history. So what we want to do is like create arbitrary objects. So the good thing of unserialized is it allows us to create objects and to fill all their properties. The problem you usually have when you have lots of vulnerabilities that allows you to create an object is um, that you can only override the public properties. But with unserialized, you can override each pop uh, property, the public, the private, or the protected ones. Um, but don't mistake that for uh, like a full unserialized of objects. You can only unserialize the inst inst instance of a class that already exists. So you cannot just inject a new method uh, that you, uh, with, with bytecode or so. You cannot just inject code that gets executed. That's not possible. However, whenever uh, you unserialize an object, PHP will check if this object has a, a wake-up method in its class definition. If it has a, a wake-up method, it will execute it. And the other thing that's new in PHP 5, although PHP 5 is already old, but um, in PHP 5, the whole object model was uh, restructured, and so now uh, objects have real destructors. So um, the thing is, when you uh, unserialize an object, and it get later de destroyed, the destructor will be called. In PHP 4, nothing like this happened. So this means, when you unserialize an object that's existing in application, there are two possibilities where directly code will be executed. Either it's the wake-up method, or the destructor will be executed, if there is one. 
So to show you the internal working of uh, Unserialized, I have a, a little example. Uh, one thing that's very important for the second part of the presentation is um, on the right side, you see a variable table. This is an internal table of unserialized that keeps track of all the uh, variables created by the unserialized parser during the unserialized, during the single call of unserialized. Um, the idea of that is uh, when you want to unserialize a, re uh, re um, a reference, you need to know which variable you want to reference to. So what happens is that unserialized creates a variable table where every variable it creates is uh, inserted or a pointer to the variables inserted. And later when you like create a reference to the third slot, then unserialized will look into the variable table and get the, the variable from there. So this example starts with unserializing in an array. This array is supposed to have six elements. And so you see PHP creates an array with six elements. Uh, then it continues and um, creates all the content of the array. The first thing is the key is a zero, an integer zero, and the value is an integer zero. So it will insert it in the first slot of the array, and you see that the variable table is already filling with the array and a pointer to the, uh, the first entry. And this continues to like a floating point, 2.0, a string, A, B, C, D, and now we get a reference. And now it's a reference to the third slot. So PHP will go to the third slot and see Oh, it's a pointer to the, uh, the floating point 2.0, so this would be a reference to the 2.0. And the next element should be like an any class. I call it my class in this time. Um, it could be any class. And you can see that this has two properties, A and B, and PHP will now continue to unserialize each property, which again will be a re reference to the class itself and a null value. Again, you see every time a variable is created, it's inserted in the variable table. And now we have unserialized the whole object, and what happens now is PHP will attempt to execute the, uh, the wake up. If there's a wake up, it will be executed, otherwise it will just continue unserializing the rest. In this case, it will create an internal PHP uh, object of type SPL object storage. We go to this later. And uh, yeah, after that, it will be finished. OK, that's how unserialized works. And I already told you um, that putting user input in unserialized is maybe not a good idea. So what actually is required for an application to be vulnerable so that we can do a property-oriented programming attack? Um, of course, the most obvious way that an application can be vulnerable to this is if it puts user input directly into unserialize. Um, but when you look at PHP applications, you will see that unserialized is used in very many different places. And not always it's user input that it put into unserialized. And when you look at all the uh, different types of web application vulnerabilities, you will see that there are other kind of vulnerability classes that can be leveraged to attack unserialized. So I will go through each of the classes now. So the first one is what I repeated several times now. You just unserialize user input directly. Why would you do that? Um, PHP application developers are usually lazy, and it's the easiest way to uh, transfer bigger amounts of data between, for example, the client and the server. So every time a PHP application um, has to transfer a whole array to the client and back, um, the uh, PHP application developer has to choose a way to do that. And uh, traditionally, they were all lazy and just used serialized and unserialized. So they put the uh, array to, ar uh, to serialize and just use a string, for, for example, for a hidden form field. And this is the most, most of the time you see unserialized and serialized content in uh, hidden HTML form fields or in the cookie. Um, actually, this is an example from TikiWiki. And TikiWiki is even more nice. It just, not, it just unserialized um, two request variables, uh, which is um, a collection of pages that are supposed to be printed. And uh, it will do some modification of this data. And later, the